Let's dive in and take a look at how we can use substance materials in Blender. So I'm going to come over to Edit Preferences, and you can install the Blender plugin just like you would any add-on in Blender. Here you can see I've already done this. And we have a few preferences that you can check out. So we have one option here for automatically attaching materials to selected objects. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. We also have a setting here for the relative data path. This is going to allow you to set the location of the generated substance assets that are going to be relative to the blend file. Then here you have all of the outputs and the naming convention for those outputs. So for example, if you look at the base color, it's going to be looking for the name of the output to be base color or any of these names. And this is here in case you are working with Substance Designer and you're creating your own special outputs, you can actually name them here and the Blender plugin will be able to pick that up and hook up the appropriate connections, depending on how you may name your custom outputs. So with this said, we have the plugin added and ready to go. And so now we're going to take a look at how I can use some substance materials to help texture this asset. Now, this asset was created by my coworker, Casimir Perez. And here in the shader editor, you can see that I have a new Substance 3D tab. This tab will also show up here in the 3D view as well. So we'll take a look at this again in just a bit. If you need some Substance materials, you can access Substance Share, which is our community sharing site for Substance materials. All content on Share is free to use. You can also click this button to quickly access the Substance 3D assets. So here, if you need to go and browse for a particular material, you can do that as well. So that's what I've actually done here. I've gone through and I'm actually going to be using this rotten wood and I can just download this substance material and use it directly in Blender. So now that I have my substance material, I can come over here to this button, which is going to load a substance material file. So we'll do that here again is that rotten wood SBSAR. This is the material that I want to use and I'll click to load the substance material. So here in the first part of our properties window is where we can see a list of all the loaded SBSAR files that we have here in our blend file. You can also access this by using this keyboard shortcut, control shift U. Now here in the top right, we're going to have some controls for attaching this material to the object. And that's what I had hinted towards when we were talking about the preferences. We can have this set to automatically attach the material to the selected object. So I have that off. So what I need to do is just come over here and click this button. So I'm going to click the button. And here we can see that the substance material has now been attached as a material to this object that I had selected. Here in the shader editor, I can see the material and the substance group that has now been created. So if we take a look here at this group node, and I'll hit tab just to jump into this, we can see that we have a series of substance textures that have been generated by the plugin and are now being fed as inputs into the BSDF shader here within Blender. Now, using the graph and substance parameters, I can go in and start to make changes. So, for example, this resolution is pretty low. Let's go in and just set this to something a little higher. I'm going to set this to 1024, and you can see that my resolution is already changing. So now I'd like to actually rotate my textures to match the orientation of the UV. So I can do that here just simply on my mapping node. I'll come over here to the Z axis for my rotation, and I'm just going to set this to 90 degrees, and that will set the correct rotation here for the texture. So now I have the substance material, it's applied, and now we can start taking a look at playing around with the various parameters here. So here we have this outputs. So these are the outputs that are actually connected. And if we want to disable one of these, you can just click this button here and you can see that it essentially just turns off that connection to the shader. So I'm just going to re-enable it. I definitely want to have that on. And under parameters is where you're going to start to see the parameters that were exposed as part of the substance file. Let's take a look at this color. And I'm just going to drop the color value for this just slightly here. And then I can start to play around with some of the parameters, like this rotten area amount. Let's just increase this a little bit. Let's play around here with the rotten area opacity. I can just drag this up a little bit. And here we go. So I'm just making just a quick variation change on this substance material. Since this is coming from the Substance 3D Asset site, you'll also see this technical parameters. So with this, you can do some image editing. Like, for example, if I wanted to maybe increase my luminosity, contrast, maybe desaturate this texture slightly, I can do so here. Now, you'll notice that we have this presets drop down. And at the recording of this video, we can't see the presets that are embedded in the substance file. But what you are going to have is always this field for custom and default. So, for example, if I set this back to default, this is just a really quick way to get back to all of the default settings of that substance material. Notice that my resolution dropped all the way down here to 256, and all of my parameters are set to default. However, since I have this custom, I can always jump back to the custom tweaks that I've done to my material to get right back where I was. 
So with the object selected, we'll come over here to the materials. You can see the rotten wood materials now available to me in my material index. And if I wanted to assign this to another object, like let's just say really quickly, I select the roof, I can just come over and browse my materials to be linked and just link that rotten wood here to the roof as well. So I'm just going to undo that. So let's say that I want to make a variation of the material that I add. Now, of course, I could add another material. If I just click here, I could load another substance material. It's going to show here in my loaded SBSARs window. However, in this case, I'd like to maybe make another variation to this rotten wood. So with it selected, I'm just going to come over here and duplicate the selected SBSAR file. So you can see here that it creates this rotten wood one. So another version of this. Now, if I like, I'll just come over here to the roof. And in this case here, I'm just going to use my attach SBSAR button. So we'll attach it. And now this material or this duplicated version of this rotten wood has been assigned to the roof. Now I can go in and start to play around with some of the settings here. So again, I have all fresh parameters. So let's, uh, let's maybe go back to that mapping node. And I'm just going to set that to maybe 90 degrees again. And I'm going to set my resolution back to 1024. And then here I can start to play around, like I said, with my parameters just to kind of get the exact look that I want. So maybe here I'll just change the color. And maybe play around a little bit with this rotten area parameter. So we'll do this. And here we go. So now you can see again in my loaded SBSARs window, I have my rotten wood. I have a duplicated version of that that I've now instanced or linked to another object here in my Blender scene. Now to work with your substance materials, you don't have to be in the shading tab or in the shader editor. Like I said, that substance 3D tab is going to be available to you in the different various views. So here I'm going to look at my properties and you'll notice again here we have our substance 3D tab. So if I wanted to, let's say in a different view, quickly get to my rotten wood one, this is going to be the material assigned to the roof and start to go in and tweak some of my parameters. I can easily do that here as well. So you can see here, I'm just going to make a change. Let's just maybe make this like slightly blue maybe a little bit darker. And here we go. I can quickly make a change within any of the 3D views that I have here within Blender. And that's going to complete this quick look at how substance materials work in Blender.